Hey creeps, the second day exploring Sydney was just as awesome, if not even more awesome than my first day exploring Sydney. I started my day off here in Potts Point where I'm staying currently. They had this beautiful open air market. There was all these happy people. It was all super sweet. Then I go to Elizabeth Bay House, which is a beautiful historic home. Then I spend most of my day at the Rocks, which is the oldest part of Sydney. It is where the first fleet landed. It's where they didn't like announced this is the penal colony. It's where they basically founded Sydney. So it's it's a pretty big deal. And it's where like an Aboriginal clan was. There's a bunch of Aboriginal clans. There is one that is actually still here, still intact, which is awesome. They got pushed out a little bit, but they've held strong, which is great. So yeah, enjoy watching my second day in Sydney and I hope you grab some wine and join me and I'm still drinking this awesome rosé. So chin chin creeps, let's get to exploring. Hey creeps, it's day two of me exploring Sydney. I'm about to leave my hotel room and go down to the Potts Point Organic Market, which they have on Saturdays. Gonna grab a flat white. Then I'm hooking up with Sharon Hill, who's a super awesome girl who's also supposed to be at Paracon. We're going out to the Rocks, which is the historic area. Potts Point is a really interesting neighborhood because it's where all of the gangs and brothels used to be, and now it's an up and coming neighborhood. It's pretty awesome, but there's still some remnants of its past. A lot of strip clubs a lot of unusual things, but then you come across a really nice coffee house and you're like, oh, okay, it's definitely cleaning up. So it's really interesting to see a city that is definitely, or a neighborhood, I should say, it's in the middle of it coming up. I'm gonna say something that feels like sacrilege, but I actually think Sydney has Seattle beat with coffee culture. Their flat whites are amazing. There's literally coffee shops everywhere and Coffee's really good. Is it better than Seattle? Hard to say. Maybe on par? I just, I can't say that it's better. I can't, I refuse. It won't happen, ever. <laughs> So you know how much I love food and I figure if I'm here I should try something that I couldn't get back home. So I got this. It's a cherry and ricotta. It's pronounced burak. It's a Macedonian pastry. I have never heard of it. I am so excited to try it. I guess you're supposed to roll the R so I tried. I probably screwed it up. So I'm gonna give this deliciousness some eating. Very interesting walking around the Elizabeth Bay neighborhood of Sydney. There's benches everywhere for people to sit, just like everywhere. And there's dogs everywhere. It's such a dog friendly city and neighborhood. I'm obsessed. And there's these awesome, cool, like rock walls everywhere. Okay, so we're about to go on the Elizabeth Bay House tour. And I'm super excited because this house is uber historical in Sydney. It was considered at its time, the finest house in the colony, which I don't know how much that's saying, considering that most of the people that lived here didn't have anything, but the house was built around 1835. They're not 100% sure when it was. Built for Secretary, Colonel Secretary Alexander McClee. McClay? I'm not quite sure how to pronounce the name. Anyways, it was built for him. The house is pretty much unfinished. It has a very severe front face. It's very colonial style. Not necessarily the most beautiful house I've ever seen, but I'm really excited to take the tour because it's Sydney history and we gotta check it out. And who knows? Maybe Mr. Secretary Alexander is still haunting the place. We can only hope, right?
we just talk about how intense this bed is? Like, look at how tall I am and then look at how tall that mattress is. That's insane. But look at this. Can you see? Let's see. That's the view. That is the view of Elizabeth Bay. It is gorgeous. Look at this. It is kind of incredible. Just really kind of incredible. Okay guys, I'm really excited because this house has a cellar and we can go into it. So, let's go. I'm so excited. So what I think is really interesting about this house is that the original owner, Colonel Secretary Alexander, his family was in the wine business, so it was super important to him to have his own personal wines in his house. So he bottled, he did the whole thing. Viniculture was a really big deal to him. You can even see some of the same handwritten labels still. And what I also think is awesome is they had the wine cellar and they also have a food cell. And the reason why they had them separate is because they didn't want the wine to spoil. Not the food to spoil, the wine to spoil. So I think he's a man after my own heart, honestly. I think he has his priorities straight. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I really don't like being in the cellar by myself. It actually really freaks me out. I couldn't go into the very back room. I got a really, really, really weird fear feeling. Basically just like something kind of was telling me like, don't go in that room. So I didn't, but we saw most of the cellar. Hope you guys are okay with that. to the oldest pub in Sydney. It's called Fortune of War. It's located in the rocks, obviously, because it's the oldest part of Sydney. It's where the first fleet landed. It's where all the convicts were originally. So yeah, let's go get our drink on. Okay, so I'm at Foundation Park, which is basically all of these old school cottages. They kept the foundations up from like when the convicts first came here. It's insane. It's awesome. And you can see the entrance to one of them right here. Check it out. So we're going to go in it. It is so freaking awesome. Like, look at this. They still have where they would have had their oven, their wash sink their little window window look at this and look how small this is this is what people would have lived in back in the day and this is if you even got your own cottage like this is high living in freaking Sydney back in the day no joke like this is when you're doing fine you're doing good and look at this and you can even see in the rock how crude it is this is from them picking into the sandstone by hand it's just 
Like you really get to walk in people's lives here. Like it's just preserved. And we're in the middle of the rocks and there's all, you can see there's all this new construction right outside and they kept it. Like they kept it intact. How cool is that? And then there's a whole bunch of stuff up there. There's a bunch of people doing parkour up there. So we're not gonna borrow with that. I'll show you guys that later. But how cool is this? Way to go, Sydney. Okay, so I am now standing in front of the Rocks Harbor Hotel, Sydney. It was built in 1877 and it has a really amazing and sweet history and little macabre, possibly paranormal shindig to go with it. So the story goes that the madam of the hotel, her name was Scarlett. There was a sailor that used to stay at the hotel named Eric. They fell in love and he promised her that when he got back from his three month voyage, he would marry her. Well, he went good on that promise. He came back after that voyage, but she had died of tuberculosis. So he's heartbroken and at some point dies. And now the story goes that he haunts the hotel and he asks people, have they seen Scarlet? So as a very fun, cheeky way to embrace the story and the history, whether it's true or not, they have named their bar Eric searching for Scarlet and their restaurant Scarlet. So whether it's true or not, they completely embrace the story. They obviously enjoy it. People say they see Eric. Um, hopefully he's found Scarlet by now, but who knows? All right, so I am in the Suez Canal, which is this cute little, well, it's cute now, little alleyway with cobblestone streets and brick buildings and sandstone walls. Back in the day, this wasn't necessarily as cute. So it's called this basically as a little cheeky form of sewer, it's the Suez Canal. And this is where a lot of the brothels were, a lot of the, like, I think they call it the Sly Grog, which is basically like, their version of prohibition when they couldn't sell alcohol legally, they had really bad alcohol, which they called like grog. And this is where you would get it. This was kind of like the crappy area of town. You had a lot of convicts that hang out here, or just kind of like people that were into the more seedy elements of life in Sydney. And it's interesting because the city actually has prostitution, which is illegal. And that was only legal in starting in 1979, but there's always been prostitution here. Brothels and bordellos have always been a thing. So this is kind of where it started. There are a bunch of other different areas of town that I will take you guys to that there's even more of it, but this is kind of where it started. So yeah, you know, I love a brothel. So I'm about to tour Susanna Place, which I'm really excited about because it's all that's left of some of these old school homes that used to house a lot of these Irish immigrants. It was like low income housing. There's these small little houses with small little backyards. And it was built in 1844 and there's four of them left and you still get to tour them. And I'm so excited because there's a lot of history here about the convicts. There's also such a huge Irish immigration that was brought here. So I'm really excited to go in and see how they lived. And if I find out anything exciting, I will let you guys know. Unfortunately, I can't film or take pictures while on the tour, but you know, I'll share with you guys what I can. freaking awesome day. I do have some kind of like additional details to add though. So the Susanna place that I went to, I had said that it was all Irish immigrants. That's not true. There was immigrants of all different ethnicities, nationalities. There were a lot of Irish because this town, especially when they first came over, had a lot of Irish immigrants, but they also had Greeks, they had Germans. And I also, I was not aware. And it, I guess the more I'm here, the more I realize I don't know a lot at all about Australian 
history, there was major racism towards the Germans. Like apparently if you were German here, like that really sucked. So I think that's really interesting. And I can't remember if they said that was post-war or before the war. All I know is it wasn't great for them at all. Um, actually, it was before the war because the family talked about was in 1915. So that answers that question. Also, the Harbor Rocks Hotel sits on the site of the original Sydney Hospital. So also pretty awesome. A thing that I love about the Rocks too is they talk a lot about, apparently there was two different hospitals. They had this thing called the Nurses Walk. And so there's all these different plaques commemorating all the nurses that worked here, which I think is fantastic. And then of course you have the Suez Canal, which was awesome. And then you had the oldest pub in a freaking Sydney. So had to freaking drink there, obviously. And you know what? I just really, 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 really like Sydney. I really do. I think it's an amazing city because really, there's just an ease here. The transit is easy and it's clean and it's reliable. Yes, you do a lot of walking. I walked 12 miles yesterday and I walked almost nine today. So you walk a lot, but you also, there's all these quick places to eat. And you know, it's just a little special little nugget of a town. I don't know why I said nugget because it's a big town. Anyways, follow me on Instagram. Keep watching the journey keep subscribing to the channel and watching all my weird and me make an ass of myself because I'm filming myself with a selfie stick in a city. So yay for tourism. <laughs> Just for you guys. Enjoy your wine. Enjoy your morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is. And chin chin creeps.